In our third unit, we're going to be turning to the role of geopolitics and other external actors. Because the process of enlargement has taken so long, it began with the promise of membership in Thessaloniki in 2003 and remains incomplete 20 years later or nearly 20 years later, means that the um, other actors have become increasingly visible and um, present in the Western Balkans. Now, this is not unique to the Western Balkans. There are other actors which have become more assertive around the world, such as the rise of China economically or the increasing antagonism between Europe, the United States and Russia or Turkey, a country which is not a global power, but which is an important regional power and itself a country of Southeastern Europe. All of those have seize the opportunity that the integration process of the European Union has not been proceeding at the pace anticipated and become a presence in the Western Balkans. Their influence is multifold. It is economic, political and cultural. And it is also not unified. It is not that there is one external actor, but it is rather that there are different actors which sometimes converge and sometimes diverge significantly. It is not that they all oppose the European integration of the Western Balkans, but they are competitors to the European Union in economic or political spheres, and their influence has often an effect which distorts European integration or hampers it, not because the countries necessarily oppose the European integration, but because they often are themselves authoritarian or semi-authoritarian systems which reinforce authoritarian trends. Why do they do that? Because they sometimes do it deliberately, such as Russia, which often fosters authoritarian or far-right populist movements or like China or Turkey, who often do business with state actors and rely on strongmen to do business with. So they reinforce it rather through their practice than, rather than, than through their ideas. So the engagement of external actors takes multiple forms. China has been very active with infrastructure projects and loans, which often create political and economic dependency. Russia has been involved in energy in the region, as well as building political ties, in particular with Serbia and Serbian political parties and actors across the region, and fostering the idea of cultural commonalities and using it often to try to disrupt European and NATO integration of the region. Turkey, on the other hand, has been very much in favor of NATO membership and even European integration of the region, but has been using its strongman image to build these ties, sometimes based on cultural affinity, sometimes on pure business interest, but often still undermining rule of law and some of the EU values. So, on one side, one could argue that the role of external actors has shown that the European Union is a different type of foreign policy actor. Unlike the others, it offers membership. Nobody can join Russia, China, the United States or Turkey, but rather they offer alliances, but not permanent membership. In that sense, the European Union is a very different actor as it, at least for the Western Balkans, allows them to think of future member states. So, this makes it a fundamental different type of, of, uh, of actor in the region, but also raises the question of the tensions between quote unquote geopolitics, namely the, the competition between great powers uh, across the world and values. Because the European Union is based on values and the membership is only offered to countries which sign up and implement those values, which is different for the other powers which do not require such a commitment, which does make alignment and association and cooperation easier. But at the same time, when Europe, as the last commission calls itself a geopolitical commission, uh, defined itself in this kind of um, global competition with other powers, there is a danger that it puts values in the second tier over power and uh, influence. And this, of course, undermines a value-based European Union and a value-based integration process where it is not so much about friends, but about partners who share the same values. And these challenges become clear in moments of crisis, such as 
the Russian war in Ukraine and elsewhere when there are questions of do countries in the Western Balkans align with the European Union based on values or just on a strategic choice. So from this point of view, we can see in the Western Balkans very clearly how on one side, it provides a space for the European Union to promote its values in a clear way, but the inability to integrate the countries uh, in the last 20 years also highlights the uh, challenge coming from other actors and the competition which results from it, which might in fact undermine the value-based agenda of the European Union.